what to expect when you're using laser, what do you look for when you're not getting the results, and what to also to check for. Now, if your diagnosis is not right, you can treat all you want and you're not going to get the results you're expecting. Now, some people are quite good with things like the uh, scanner. They can have a quick look inside there with an ultrasound. That's great. A lot of us don't have that. It's on my wants list, as well as doing a few courses on it, but I don't have it yet. So I've got to work on the diagnosis. And what I've found when patients coming in to see me have had this condition normally for over a year. Uh, so I don't get very many acute conditions, all mine tend to be long-term chronic problems. Uh, so my treatment of them is going to be slightly different to other people's. I'm a bit of a maverick, as uh, Steve said. My past career, this is my fourth career as a podiatrist, uh, my first career was working with radar systems, uh, early warning systems, targeting missiles, sinking ships, and blowing up parts of Iraq back in 1991. Uh, I've been around the block numerous times, and basically I'm a veteran. So my idea of how all the system works is going to be completely different to everybody else's. So I tend to play with the settings a lot. So I'm not going to go into settings because what I use will be completely different to somebody else's. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's whatever works with you. Now, like I said, a lot of the treatments I do are for long-term chronic. So you've got the, 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 as well as the additional problems of trying to treat it with laser, you've got all the additional problems that come along with it. They've been limping, they've been offloading. So things like an extensor digitorum brevis is going to be sore after you've taken away the pain underneath. So this pain is going to move around in a lot of chronic conditions. So what I do, I break down the condition that I've diagnosed into its component forms. Your inflammation, your chronic pain, uh, edema. So you've got all that inflammation, all that swelling, all that fluid, everything inside there. So I break it down and I treat every symptom it, it, everything I find differently and separate. Uh, I, I too like the plantar fasciitis setting. I also work on the muscles a lot in the prone position, but I tweak it here and there. And that just comes from my background. And uh, I'm not saying you, you could use all the settings, but if you use the settings in the machine, you can jump between tendonitis setting break on neuralgia setting, and just keep them going through it all. Now, what I've found uh, quite a lot recently is my diagnosis has been off. I hate to say it, but I have been wrong and quite a few times. Uh, with a lot of the chronic conditions that have been coming on the past year, people have been out walking a lot more. They've started running, they've started cycling, they've started doing a lot of things. And a lot of things like retrocalcaneal bursitis if it gets really chronic, can show itself as with a symptom of plantar fasciitis. So I have had to take a step back recently and really think about what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to give the patient and making sure that I give them the right treatment possible. Uh, I've got it wrong quite a few times. I've corrected myself after the second treatment and all of a sudden they've got better. As Adam says, uh, in fact, Kirsten said as well, when you get your first treatment done, you should be knocking down the pain a lot. And if you're not, something else is amiss there. Now, when I've done the treatment, I've worked on the back of the leg. They've gone through their exercise programs. They're following it correctly. When you've got a really turgid heel, I don't do injections. So I've got to go down to strapping. And I don't use low dye tra strapping at all. I use a lot of KS tape with zinc tape as well. I do what they call a heel pucker in, in America. It's a calcaneal fat pad uh, strapping. And basically what you're doing in the fat pad is, if that's the toes, there's a heel pad and up the back, you're strapping right the front of the calcaneum, round up the back, round again, and cross over. And they cross over the back, and you do the same round the front, and the heel pad will pucker up. 
When you do that after the second or third treatment, their, their uh, symptoms improve a thousandfold. Uh, I've found it to be very, very handy because all you're basically doing is pushing a fatty pad together so you've got a big cushion. When it gets to near the last appointment, I've started, I never used to use orthotics for uh, these conditions, but I've started putting them into a form orthotic because it's nice and soft, and it's easy to mould, and you can modify it really quickly. And that gives them the long-term solution. All I want to reiterate is make sure you get your correct diagnosis first time because we'll all diagnose it wrong. We'll get in our heads, oh, it's plantar fasciitis. There's a setting for that, and off we go. Whereas sometimes, a little bit outside the box, do have a couple of extra che checks, and uh, you can still treat, because sometimes, like I've found with retrocalcaneal bursitis, over a long period of time, the way they've been walking, they've been pulling on the plantar fascia, and it's really tight as well, and it's causing a lot of discomfort. But it's actually only a symptom of the actual original condition, so you've got to treat the symptom, work your way back, and then treat the condition. So you're going from basically the ball of the foot all the way up the foot, around your peroneals, around your adductors, up the back of the leg. If it's been helpful to anybody, then thank you for listening.